Hello, hello. Welcome to Sunday's Facebook Live with Kate Quinn. Can you guys do me a favor? The first people that are getting on, can you let me know how the sound is and how our picture is so that we can make any adjustments before we start uh, teaching? We want to make sure everybody has a good view and that they can hear really well. Hi, Carol. Nice to see you. Hi, Renee. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Becky. All right, so it looks like we have a good number of people. I'm going to just scoot this over here, make sure my thread doesn't pop out here. Looks a little short. Let's make sure our bobbin is pulled up too. You guys know me, I always struggle with that afterwards and it's very annoying. All right, there we go. I've, I can feel right now when I pull on this top thread, I can feel that there is tension on it. So that's a good thing. We always want some tension on it. It's a lot of tension. Let's see. We might need to lower that just a little bit. So I'm going to do that real quick. Today, we are sharing the really fun and beautiful spin effects number three. So here is the data sheet right here. Hi, Liz. Hi, Susan. A lot of new faces and a lot of um, new names too. A lot of old faces and a lot of new names. So welcome everybody. If you, this is your first time, we're so excited that you're sharing this with us. What I try to do, if you've never seen my um, tutorials before, is I try to give you all the basic content that is the most common usage of the template. So we're going to show you the basic markings and a very simple first go at this spin effects. And then I'm going to show you some additional designs in order to let you get more value out of the template so that you know it's not just a one-shot deal or a one-trick pony. It's really, really valuable. So here we go. This is our pretty design. When I look at this, the very first thing that I see is a leaf. And I will tell you honestly, I try to free motion leaves, but for some reason they just don't like me. I'm terrible at them. I can never seem to make them symmetrical or, you know, one kind of goes awry or whatever. It's just, it's not my favorite thing because I'm not good at it. And I know I need to practice, but I also have this amazing template, which is going to help me practice. So going to go ahead and show you some great ideas to help you spring into the beautiful weather that we just pray is coming soon. Okay. So let's get started. Right off the bat, I've just got some very basic markings with my crosshair square. So I'm only doing the four petals initially. I want to show you what the shape is and how it can be used in different ways. So this is the smallest one. All of our spin effects are designed so that you can rotate around this end or this end, and it's going to give you a different look. Obviously for me, I like this shape right here. This is the leaf with this being the tip of the leaf. But of course we could use it like that and it's going to look different. Notice that I have these stable tapes on both sides. If I hold the ruler like this and I stitch it this way, this rounder curve is always going to be on this left side. If for some reason I want this rounded edge to be on the other side, I have to go like that in order to do it. So that is why I have the grips on both sides. It gives you maximum flexibility. So essentially there's four different orientations that you could use. So let's try it. Just pick up your thread. The needle is my center position. Go ahead and put your ruler in before you secure your thread. That's definitely the easiest. And I like to have this underneath here. So see if I can get him. Sometimes they're wonky and they don't want to behave. All right, so get my needle centered. And this machine, if I tap it, the foot will descend a little more, which I like. So we'll start with the leaf right? And I want to show you something important when we line it up. So I'm tucked all the way in with the back of the ruler right against the foot. Notice that the point of this leaf 
is not centered on this line. I mean, it could be if we wanted it to, but the center line of the leaf is actually this line right here. So that's just something for you to note. Could I align it like this? I totally could. I could use this point and I could line it right up on the line. But what will happen is more fullness will be on this side than on this side. Where if I align it this way, the value, the spatial value of the leaf is centered even if the point is not. So those are just some options for you. So let's start sewing. Notice I'm going to use a nice easy rhythm on my machine. When I get to the point, I'm just going to take one extra stitch and then sew back down the other side, keeping that foot connected nice and smooth. So we're just doing four, okay? And I'll just keep moving these threads out of the way. People sometimes ask me why I don't cut those. Because it's a big rigmarole to get under there, under the foot when the needle is engaged. And I have ended up cutting my thread, my sewing thread. Easier for me to just move it out of the way sew what I want to sew, and then when I'm finished, then I can tie it off. So honey's with me today, so if you have any challenges with the visuals or whatever, let me know, and he's always really good about helping me get reoriented, so I show you the best that I can. So there is a little bit right here of a little tiny um, stitch over right there at the anchor point. I don't care, I'm good with that. It's just gonna end up having more thread right there in that center position, and that's okay. I don't mind that. Okay, so we'll do a little tacking. I'm just gonna scoot it out of the way, put a couple of extra stitches right there. If there's any gaps, I can fill it in just like that if there's any little holes, and nobody will know. Okay, so let's pull this out and we'll just put this right back in the center by putting our needle right down where we left off and taking one full stitch cycle. I can loosen this up and when I pull these threads right here, there's my bobbin right there. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to trim that off and we'll pull that out so you can see everything. So I always get the thread questions, so I'll, I'll just answer those while we go along. I am using this really beautiful 40 weight Fantastico thread. It's from Superior. It's a variegated polyester thread, and I just love it. It is so shiny and pretty, and it's really strong. So here we go. There you go. So notice here, you know, to me, this fan blade kind of looks like, you know, if this is the blade, maybe it's spinning that way. So if we flip the template over, we can make them spin the other way. And that, that can change your design. It's really up to you. You can mix and match them, or you can make them all go the same direction. Just know that when I use one side, so let me see if I can line it up for you. So this is the way that we did it. If I sewed it this way, it's going to point the other way. See that? Very pretty. What a good idea. Let's see if I can make that happen. Somebody just said that would make a really cool butterfly. If I did it, butterfly, I think I want to wing it out a little bit more. But that would be such a cool idea. Make like a deep V like that and align these along the V so there's a little overlap. Ooh, who was that? I got to give them credit. That's a really good idea. Ernestine. Ernestine. Love it. Great idea. Thank you so much. I'm going to steal that and I'll give you credit. I promise. Okay. So we've done this one. Now that is where the leaf is the base and we're going to flip it over and we're going to use this pointy edge as our pivot now, just so you can see the difference. Again, we'll get ourselves right in the center. We're just doing four petals for these particular ones because we have a lot of other stuff that we want to share. So we don't want to spend all of our time on this, but you could use any crosshair square that you wanted and you could do as many rotations as you want. Plus, we have a lot of different sizes of this template that we're going to be sharing today. So you'll get a chance to see what some of the different options are. So before we were like this, so we want the pointy end in the middle. Oh, tricky, right? So we got to line it up 
on the point, which does make it a little more challenging to line up down here. Can you see that? So this is definitely a little cattywampus, but what I did is this is the center line right here. I'm still just gonna line it up. The reason I don't wanna line the center up like that is because we'll get some kind of a weird uh, point outside of the center and that's, you know, you can do it if you want to, but it's gonna be a little bit less controlled. So I'm gonna make it be in there and pivot around here. And then I'm just gonna fudge this center position so the very tip is right on that outer edge, right on the line. And as long as I do it the same, it's still gonna work out. Okay, so always with your spin effects when you're working, make sure that you look inside and the needle is centered. That's really important to help you get that accuracy so you don't have a lot of um, crisscrossy stitches right at the tip there. Okay, and we'll just keep going around. So I'm using this center line. That's something that may or may not be clear in the printed directions. That's just something for you to know. And again, if I wanted to go the other curve direction, I could flip this over and do it the same way, but the leaves would curve on the opposite way. So here's the last one. Pull it forward, hook it right into the foot, and make sure this center line here is on the line, touching that line. And that'll give you that same symmetry that you wanna have. Here, just take that extra stitch and actively change directions to go back to your center. So same thing that we did before, I'm just gonna kinda pull these out of my way so that I have a nice clean tack off right here in the center. always pick up your foot that loosens up that thread so that I can pull that and it's also lengthening my bobbin thread. That means when I try to pick it up by bringing my needle down and up I have some slack in the bobbin thread so then I can lift it up. All right let's cut these bad boys. So you can see that's quite a different look very much creates a little bit more of that pinwheel, but you know, getting narrower there in the center. So here we'll pull it up. So here is version one right there. Not as much of a butterfly look. And there is version two. I won't lie, I like this one better. Ha! Huh. But you have choices, which is great. Always choices is good. Okay, let's move on to some of the other fun stuff we have in store. So I set it up today to do something that I get asked a lot, but we don't usually show it. So hopefully you'll bear with me today while I show it. Hopefully I won't mess up. <laughs> oh, right, it's okay if we mess up. Everybody messes up sometime. This is about a 10 inch space. And what I'm going to do is start right in the middle with my pin. So I have to mark some stuff before I do that. So I'm going to get out my large crosshair square because I want my lines to go pretty far out there. So if I use my little one, the lines will only go out to here, but I want to use something big. So I'm going to make sure that I'm using this larger one. So a couple of people have asked, you didn't use the pinhole on that spin effects during those designs. Do you have one coming up later? you're going to show with the pinhole? You guys, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm using the pinhole right now. That's what we're going to do right now. So we're going to answer those pinhole questions because that's the question that we probably get asked the most about how to use that with your spin effects. And I'm going to go over all the gory details right now. So let's go ahead and we'll mark this. We need our eight point crosshair lines. And let's see if I can find my Choco liner. I love my Choco liner for making these marks because that is much more accurate. So let's see if we can get this right on here. We want it squared up. So we'll use our 10. Right here is the 10. So if we line that right up, we should be right on all of these corners and be able to get everybody nice and straight. So we'll go ahead and put all these marks in. So you can see this Choco liner, it fits right in there and it makes a really great, smooth, straight line. 
Inside my Choco Liner, I have Hansi Iron Off Chalk Powder. And the thing that I love about that is I can remove it with a little shot of steam from my hot iron. And then I don't have to erase anything. It's great. Okay, let's see, did I get them all? I think so. Hopefully we didn't miss any, but let's show you. So I just take this off carefully. I don't wanna scratch anybody or create any problems. So there's our eight point crosshair. You can see our lines are really big. So we wanna make sure that we can align the template when we use it. So we just said we're gonna use the pin. So obviously the first thing we need to do is get our pin out and put the pin in. The pin's gonna go right through that center dot and it's gonna come up from the back. So I'm gonna have to kind of pull it towards me so I can get that in there. And the size I'm going to use for this particular 10 inch block, I'm using a seven and a half. And I'm gonna show you how I fit it, how I decided what size that I needed for this space. So there is a bigger one, there's the nine and a half and there's also the 11. And so you can see, you can do something really big. I mean, this thing is gigantic size. But we're just gonna use the seven and a half right now. So let me find it right here. Okay, so this one is a, a, a reasonable size. If I put this pin on here, flip it over. So obviously with the pin, I can't use both sides. The pin forces you to orient as if it were a leaf so that the leaf point goes away from the center, right? But we'll still use the same markings. Notice how this comes pretty far out but it is going to fit in this box because this right there, this is a quarter inch away. So we'll be close to this 10 inch line, but it will fit. And you can always put your template up like that and make a decision over whether it will fit or not. You can even just put this right on there. And as long as this blue edge on this side is inside your boundary, then you're fine. So, I think some people have seen my jump stitch technique before, but that's the technique that we're gonna highlight today. And the reason that we wanna use that is this particular shape, once I put my foot in inside of it and I anchor my needle, then I, let's just do it real quick. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna stick my needle down. I'm not gonna sew it right here, but you'll see. I, I can't move much if I'm out here, I can move more, but if I stop down there, I can't because I'll have two pivots right there that are holding the ruler right in place. So you can get a little bit more movement if you stop where it's wider, but I may or may not be able to line it up. So what I like to do is just use that bottom position. So we'll just bring our needle up. Start right in the base, and then I'm gonna show you how we can hop over for each lobe. And again, it's the same thing that we told you before. If we wanna have our leaf orient to the right or left, that's a choice that we can make. It's totally up to us. So let me just come down a little bit so you can see what I see right here. So right here, this is the alignment. So don't worry about this part, of course. We, we want this center mark but this will fit, so let's get started. When you sew, nice, easy sound. Trying to keep it very rhythmic. How many people know about our new precise pedal power that is from Sew so Steady? So it's created by um, a shop owner that is from Coos Bay, Oregon. So right here, you can see I can't pivot. So what do I do? I'm stuck. Ah! So let's just put a few tacking stitches right there. Make sure that we're nice and secure. Notice how I'm not even holding onto the ruler. I'm just gonna lift up the needle, pick up my foot, and just turn and get lined up. Once I'm lined up, I can even hold this top thread if I want to just to create a little tension. I'm lined right in my crosshair mark, and I'll put my needle down and rather than tack twice, I'm gonna tack at the end. So 
So you'll see in just a second, put a little extra stitch right there. And that way they'll all have that. So that'll look really even. Pick up my needle and my foot and just move over a little bit. We'll just hold on to this if we need to. So we are gonna get some thread build up right there. That's okay. I'm not worried about it and you shouldn't be either. So here, this compression with this finger is activating that grip under there. If I need more pressure, I can activate right here and make sure that the template will not slip. One of the things I like for this particular template about using this is I really love that we're getting individual petals and they're much further away. So this is more like a wreath. It's gonna create an opening in the center and it's going to have each of these petals have their own identity. So I do like that. And let's go ahead and we'll put those tacking stitches in right there. And we can just keep rotating. So the function of the pin is that the pin is making sure that we are the same distance from the center. So right there, I'm gonna grab that little thread. I'm gonna tuck him in. I don't want him to be stitched. So I'm just gonna move him a little bit out of the way. All right, so it's allowing the design where each of the petals are going to be the same distance from the center. So it's giving that symmetry that we want to have. Okay, and then we'll just tack it right there. Same thing. So that's not really hard to do, right? I mean, this doesn't seem really hard. I, I think when I used to do this, when I first started doing it, I couldn't conceive of how I could move around with the designs. But once I figured out this like little jump stitch idea, I really like it. It's much more flexible and you can use this for just about anything. Okay, so I can tell I'm jumping around a little bit because when I'm sewing, it's really hard for me to concentrate. <laughs> How did you guys have that problem too? So the precise pedal power tool that we have, I'm just gonna put it up on the screen really quickly. Look at it, it's super awesome. So this is, scoot it down. Okay, I'm showing you this little picture, the angle right here. I'll, I'll show you the other one in a minute. This black piece right here and this leg what it is showing you is you can raise or lower this leg and then when you push down this is the stopper this buttresses the amount of pressure that you can put on the foot so i can only put it down as far as i want to and then as long as i press my gas all the way i will have speed control and this is mechanical it's not electronic it's very easy to adjust and this is a single leg so if for some reason I want to go faster, then I can just push the pedal down onto the side and it will go faster. So it's not that it prevents you from going any speed you want, but it gives you a way to control the speed that you do want. So that's how you can get that nice, even sound. So pretty awesome. And if you struggle with that, if you struggle with your speed control, and you don't perhaps maybe have something on your machine like a speed control, this can be a great option for you to add to your setup to give you that control. Okay, I think we tacked this in already. Look, I'm stuck. Okay. So a little bit of finagling, you know, moving things around, but no more than we normally have. We still always have to line everything up and the pin is really creating that perfect alignment, which is something we always want. So then we'll just start sewing. As long as I'm going in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction, the benefit is I'm not gonna sew over any of those threads. So when I'm all finished, then I can just do this little tack right there and then cut all those threads at the end. So we only have a couple more. We'll just do the rest of it so you can see what it looks like. I think it's really a beautiful design. I really love how it um, moves out from the center. It's almost like a wreath. So that's what I'm gonna call this. To me, this is more like a wreath design. And of course, I told you this is a seven and a half inch size. So if I needed a really big wreath, 
I could use the 9 or the 11. This is already 10 inches with this design. And you could easily echo these with a bigger size if you wanted to create a little gap space in here. So lots of options for how you could play with this design. All right. So right here, you can see we're a little bit close, but we should be okay because we're going to be a quarter inch away. So we should be just a little tight right there. So can I use this technique on my other spin effects? Yes, you can. You absolutely can, and you should, because it'll be easier. So let's go ahead and we'll pick up that bobbin and get our thread cut, and I can show you the design. Okay. All right, I'm gonna pull that off. Note that the pin is still in there, right? So just to clarify, this is the seven and a half spin effects number three. You can do it at any size. You're gonna get similar type of thing. This is just increasing the spacing right here. And so whatever distance this is, it's going to push the lead that much further out, but twice. So one on this side and one on the other side. So that's how you can put it on there and audition it for size making sure that it fits the space that you want it to fit. Did, did you have a question? Yeah, can you show the back? Yeah, let me get the pin out and let me snip a few threads and we'll turn it over. You guys know that um, I always am like, oh God, please let it, let, please let it look good on the back, right? <laughs> but so you can see these are easy. I can cut them. It's going to look fine. Get your scissors right under there so you can get a nice clean cut. Sharp is good. A little embroidery snips is good. But pretty easy to do. It's not like it's really complicated. So on the back, of course, we're going to have those threads as well. I like about six, five or six tacking stitches. So there you go. Can you see it? Let's move out just a little bit. We'll come out and then I'll turn it over. So do you feel like that answered the pin controversy question? Because I'm going to tell you a secret. Please don't tell my boss. No, it's okay. She knows already. I usually don't like to use the pin because I've, I always thought it was so hard. I couldn't maneuver the way I wanted to. And now that I've discovered that I can use this method, I love it because it's so much easier. All right. So there you go. So you can see we want to cut all of those, right? But this is the back of it. I do think sometimes the little extra threads kind of make it look not as clean. So I can cut those so we can get a little better view. So the thread here on the back is 80 weight deco bob. It's much finer than our 40 weight that's on the front. And I always like to do a little different thread on the back so that you can see what it might look like if we used some different weight or maybe sometimes a different color. So I'll kind of pull it up a little bit, right? So you can see that one has a little thread. I might want to clean that up, but this isn't bad. I would be fine with that. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's a mess. They're all going to be the same. And you could fill this in. You could even put a little circle right in here. This is kind of puffy right there. And I think having maybe a little bit of additional detail or maybe echoing this on the inside would add a little bit more to that as well. So let's see how we're doing. So it looks like somebody had a question about the glider and the glider I'm using is the grid glider. It has a large cutout here so I can lower my feed dogs and raise them and not have to take this off. If I ever need to remove this in order to change my bobbin. The way that I do it is I just roll it back like this. I make sure that my needle and my foot are up always with the foot on. Never, never, never without the foot. Then this needle can cut right through that plastic and I have seen it happen. So I have learned my lesson and I will not do that. This is protecting your grid glider from that damage. 
then I can just change my bobbin, do whatever I need, and then I just kind of gently compress it under here and roll it back, get that thread out of my way, and then just reseed it and just smooth it back into place. And this thing is very secure. Oh, sorry, I moved my machine. Did you see that? That's how secure it is. It'll take the whole machine with you. So definitely, it's a great product. In order to clean it, I just polish it with my So Steady polish and my cloth. So I just have like a little microfiber cloth. And where's my polish kit? Right here. So I don't polish it every single time I use it. I only polish it about every two to three weeks or if it were to get adhesive on it or coffee or sticky fingers if I was eating chips while I was quilting, which we never do, right? But you know, if it gets dirty, this is a great way to clean it up. Or when I have sewn a lot with pins, sometimes there's little micro scratches and nicks from the pins and this product is so great. It'll kind of fill those in and restore the luster and the smoothness. It's like a pledge, it's awesome. So, okay, that's a lot of talking, let's move on. I know, I, I gotta give some sales pitches in there sometimes, right? <laughs> so let's make a border, because we have some cute areas to do that with. I'm gonna just orient you right here. This little marking right here is nothing right there. This is two inches. The leaf itself, the one that I'm going to use, sews out about one and a half. So I chose this two inch space because that's a common border size and the leaf will fit inside. It's not gonna max out this density, which I prefer. I don't want the leaf butted right up against my seam allowance when I'm sewing. So I'm gonna just show you how we can do a fun little border right in there. And maybe we'll do just a few in this other one to show you a variation that we have. All right. So here we go. Let me flip it over. This is the spin effects number three, and it's the five and a half size. It doesn't matter which way we do it. You just pick whichever one you prefer. It's okay. So we'll just stick it on there and we're gonna start sewing. I wanna kind of keep it this way so that you can see most of the sewing. So we'll be traveling down this way. So I'll just start with my needle in the boundary get it lined up and I want it lined up right on the center line. That's why I have this marking on there. That center line is going to keep me aligned in the middle and that's something I want for my border. That's intentional. All right, get these threads out of here. All right, and getting my foot ready to stitch. And here I'm going to come right back up and I'm going to stop at the center that center line we're not stopping up there we're stopping right there okay and now I can move this up and I can do the next one so here it's really important that you are stopping at that center line don't forget that you're not sewing to the tip of your leaf you need to stop in the center line right there. So right when you hit that center line. Let's bring you in just a little closer so you can see a little better. Okay, there we go. So then we'll just move up. So each time we're just getting ourselves aligned right on the center. And the way that this leaf fits, let me adjust my foot control here. You're not gonna cross over. Each leaf is gonna be independent. So we're not cutting into the leaf before, but then we're gonna come and stitch back up so we can advance along our border. We're stitching right on the template, so we should have a really nice clean line. Just hug the curve nice and easy. Now, I can do this in many different sizes. This is the five and a half size. So obviously if we went up just even one size, then I can do a wider border because this one is quite a bit wider. 
You can just put your ruler behind it and you can measure the width at the widest part and that's the border that this could fit in pretty easily. If you want your border centered, you would start the base of your leaf in the middle and work out to one side and then start in the center and go backwards to get to the other side. And that way you can make sure that you have, you know, an even amount of leaf on each end instead of having one side have a full leaf and the other side have half, unless you just want that. All right, so, oh, I did a boo-boo. Always go to your stopping position before you let go. That'll make sure that you have the same travel. That'll keep your design a little bit cleaner. So for example, I'll, I'll do it on this one. If I'm sewing around the leaf, and my daughter comes in and she's like, mom, I need you, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna say, honey, just one second. I gotta get to the stopping point. And I'll come back up. I'm like, oh, okay, honey, what do you need now? So stop up here where your travel position is. Try not to let go before you're ready to finish the design. Okay, so we'll do one last one. And we'll close that. And I would go ahead and go to this far end and then just, you know, finish off. Whatever you could fit in here would be your last one, wherever your border ends. Okay, so we'll just tack it off for, the, for this moment. And then I do wanna show you one variation. It's a little bit more work, but I do like how it looks. So I wanted to share that with you real quick. So I'm going to check in with Honey, see if we have any questions or anything. Uh, I thought we had, you know, wanting to see what this looks like on a curved line, so we'll just stay tuned uh, for that. Oh, the curvy line's going to be different, though. It's not going to be quite exactly the same. It's a little bit more fancy. But, you know, there you go. Can I embellish the leaf? Yes, I'm gonna show you how to do that to make it look more like a leaf. And in fact, I'll do it on this variation for you. So let me just cut those loose threads. I don't like them hanging out. So we'll only do um, a couple just to show you how to do it if we are switching the leaf. So these are all oriented the same direction, this shallower part and this round part. What I think would be really interesting would be to flip the leaves and alternate them. I still want the base of the leaf to be the same, but I want the round part here and then here and then here. So every other one alternated. So what I did to make sure that I know which is which, blue is one direction and green is the other direction. So uh, that's just to kind of help me you know, keep the pattern, blue, green, blue, green, blue, green, always starting at this point. Those are our little ruler stickers that we have from GE Design, and I love them. I'm finding them very, very helpful and useful. So not complicated. You already saw the basics of the design, but with this one, what that would mean is we would have to switch every time. So each lobe that we do, then we would switch. You could also create a pattern. For example, you could do two this way, and then you could do two the other way. So stopping in the center line right there. Okay, and then I'll just show you. I flip it around. I have a little pull tab right here that I've made with my tape. Take it off. And then I'm just gonna flip it over I think I'll just take the tape all the way off because now it'll be on the top for this one. So I just took it all the way off and then just put it on there. And we still want the base of the leaf and the center line again. They're still gonna have plenty of room. They're not gonna cut into each other, which is great because I like that. I don't want them cutting into each other. And I'll do the embellishment right here. So if you're going to embellish this one, you want to do it before you come back up to the top. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm just gonna kind of use about a quarter of an inch right here. You can do whatever you want, and you can even mark that if you needed to. And I'm just gonna sew in a little bit. 
until my foot touches the outside line and then I'll come back. Now I do need to realign right here so that I can line back up. So I'm just going to take a couple of stitches slowly and make sure that I'm in the line and when I see that it looks fine and I'm tracking then I'll just finish it out. That way you can make a decision if it's working before you sew the whole thing and then you're like, oh, it's a mess. Okay, so taking my tape off. So again, as I said, this is a switcheroony. Requires you to take your key on and off. I tried it without the key. There's not enough space to hold the foot down here in the base. So you have to do it with the key. I already tested that for you. I, I'm always looking for the shortcut, right? Because I want that, but. So again here, you're gonna sew the leaf. When you get down to the bottom, it's my personal preference to put the flourish always on this side. So we would go this way this time, kind of keep it the same. Stitch until my foot touches. Now this relationship right here is called a random rule. It's a rule I just made up, but I'm using it to keep that leaf looking mostly symmetrical. That little flourish on the leaf is going to come all the way out to a quarter inch right there from the edge. And then use my center line and then I can stitch back along the bottom and I can follow my stitch detail until I get back. So you notice that we're doing it on the opposite side here. So you know you have that choice. If you just want to extra stitch on the bottom every time then you don't forget or you can switch it up top and bottom always on the round side that's up to you let's do one more just to show you the pattern and then we'll be finished with this design so take your key out flip it over and then set your key in there so your tape is going to get a little bit of wear doing it this way so get lined up. So you can see how I, I like to put the edge of my finger kind of on this ledge. It gives me a little bit more push and pull and it does allow me to really compress down and, and activate those grips. So I like this on the roundy side. So I'm gonna put it on the round side again. My random rule is stitch out until the foot touches the line and then come back. And then we were double stitching all of them on this bottom, so I'll just do the same thing. And here we'll just tack that. I might even just come all the way up and just tack it. make those decisions whatever you feel like you need to do to make it look how you want and I'm going to get my needle right where I left off and loosen up everything so I can pick up that bobbin so we'll cut those threads and I'll show you that design. Give me just a sec. So I'm trying to be really good about making sure I collect up all of my threads and actually put them in my little snips box because I've been bad about that in the past. But doesn't that look awesome? I love it. Let's see if we can get you a little better view. We're going to turn you a little so you can see it. Isn't that great? Love that. This, I think, really definitely makes it have that leafy look. So this is something that I'm doing almost every time because I really think that enhances it. It gives a lot more of this definition in here. So it, number one, looks like a leaf, and then you're also getting the puff. You're getting that uh, spread here where you're going to get a little tension in the middle. So this will lift on this side, and this will lift on that side. So pretty easy to do, and you can decide whatever you want. Like, you know, if this is our, our leaf, I can make it deeper. I can make it shorter. I can say, okay, I'm not gonna cross the midline right there. If this is the midline, my little vein will come to the midline and that's it. You can make whatever rule creates the look that you want. Definitely play with that on paper. Use your stitching line discs. 
For those people that um, don't know what those are, I'll just stick them up here right on this screen real fast. So these stitching line discs, let's get you in a little bit more. I'm trying to make it wider so we can show you. There, look at how cute those are. We have four different sizes. This interior hole is what you need to worry about. This, they're all a half inch on the outside and they mimic the ruler foot. So they're, they're the exact same dimension as the ruler foot itself, okay? So when I'm using a marker, that becomes my needle. So if I'm using something really skinny like this, then I'm gonna choose one of these that fits and I can still write. If I needed a, something that was fatter, let me show you, for example, like this, this is really fat, then I'm gonna need one of these that is bigger so that this will fit on there and be sturdy on there when it's drawing. You don't want a lot of play. This one has a little bit, but this is really the best size for this of all the ones we have. So try to find one that fits the best, but that will still write. And you can use that either for marking on your quilt sandwich, or you can use it for marking on any kind of paper to play with your designs. All right, let's go ahead and move on. I'm gonna show you next this really cute idea I have for, I guess we need this space over here. So we got a 45 degree triangle, so let's kind of scoot back out so you can get the full view. And let's take a quick review for any questions. So what was the ruler name and size for that leaf ribbon? Um, so the one that we did for the leaf just now was the spin effects number three at five and a half inches. Remember that you can choose any of them and still do the design, but your dimensions will be different. So the opening that we've created right here for this is two inches, but if I had a wider border, then I can go up one size, and then this is going to give me something wider. This is the seven and a half, so this is wider than that. I don't know exactly how wide, but I would just stick my ruler on there and I would measure from this side to this side, and that would be the width that this could fit within. So you have lots of options as far as size. Of course, this is gonna be longer too, which means that you won't have as many leaves in your border. But if you have, you know, 60 inch border, maybe that's a good thing, right? You quilt it up faster. Okay, so let me show you where we're at. I have a triangle right here. This is a matched triangle to this 10 inch square. Right, so this is the 10 right here, and how big is this? This would be a seven inch, the, the uh, leg right here is seven inches. So this essentially would be half of a seven inch square. I tell you that because people always ask me, well, how big is that? But what I'm telling you is you could do this in any size. It just depends on what size spin effects that you have. So you can still do this in a different size. If you had a smaller one, your design would be a little smaller. If you had a bigger one, you could make a bigger triangle. This is a half square triangle space and I've just marked the center so that we have some reference lines for the design. I'm gonna turn it this way so that you can see the alignment right there because we're gonna line up the template right there on the center. All right, let's double check. So sometimes, sometimes people are asking some questions like about thread and stuff like that. If you know the answer and you remembered, I'm very thankful for you sharing that with other people so that I don't have to say it one more time, but I, I can say it again if you need it. Okay, so Betty, I think we answered your question. We showed how to use the pin, so hopefully. Do all the same templates fit all machines or do you have to buy more than one set? So Joe, I'm gonna answer your question. This machine that I'm using right now is a Baby Lock Altair, and the Altair is a high shank machine. I have another machine, a Janome, that is also technically a high shank machine, but I can use long arm templates on that without any problem. If I use a long arm template on my Baby Lock, I can mostly do it, but it does bind up. The height back here is not very big for a really, really fat template. So let's see if we can show you the difference between those. Let me grab a couple. 
Okay, so for example, this is high shank, right? And then this one is long arm. See how much difference there is? It's, it's slight, you know, in terms of the human condition, but that additional one and a half millimeters means that this foot doesn't have as much clearance as it would otherwise have. So it depends on your situation. What you need depends on the machine that you have, if you have more than one machine, and what do you already have, what ruler foot do you have, that makes a difference too. So if you're not sure, what I recommend is either message me or message so steady. I want to know the make and model of your machine and what tools you already have, like what ruler foot, what's the name of it, what's the brand of it, and do you already have some templates, and I need to know what thickness they are. And I can make some recommendations to try to fit your situation. And if you're more than one machine, I can try to integrate as best I can, but I can't always make it so that you can use all the same templates. For example, if I have the, either of these, these fat templates, these are not going to work well on a low shank machine. The low shank machine, the foot is so low. If I put a long arm, is my long arm template? Yes, it is, right? If I put this on there, notice that the foot doesn't even touch the ground. Can you see that? If I put this under there and I try to sew with this long arm template, the foot is above the edge of the template. So my ruler is going to prevent the stitch cycle from happening all the way. Plus, now imagine that you have to put fabric under there, right? And the foot's not even going to compress the fabric at all when it takes a stitch. So if you have a long arm or a high shank and you're trying to use these on a, long, on a low shank foot, it is very next to impossible. Okay, I mean, I don't know, maybe somebody can do it, but it's not designed that way. There's not enough clearance back here. I can use the ruler on the side without any issue. There's no problem here. But when I'm using it behind where the foot is connected, that's where the problem is when you're using it like this, because the foot will not be able to take a stitch and sew normally, and it will bind up on the ruler, literally compressing it so you can't move anything, and then you can't sew. Okay, so let's try and figure out, you know, what you need by actually determining what your products are at home. We are out there to help you. We want to help you. Let us know what you have and we'll help you. Okay, so that's an important tip for all of our beginners. So let's see. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm scrolling as fast as I can. Uh, thanks for being patient. I appreciate you guys. Okay, so I'm going to answer Jan's question. Jan says, I thought you should use the same weight thread top and bottom. I think that is an old school idea. That might have been true once upon a time when the machines had difficulty balancing their tension. Today's machines are better than ever. And as long as you can form a good stitch, you can use whatever you want. I often, often, often mix weights and I very often mix colors. By being able to balance the stitch, no matter what the thread weight is, I can make it look good on the back and I can make it look good on the front. And I can choose a color that works better on the back and not be stuck with the same color. Some machines are more finicky and that is harder to balance the thread. So for example, if you're using black on the back and white thread on the top, that can be very, very tricky. That would be an instance where I would want to choose a lighter weight thread on the back so that the stitch would hide better in the middle of the sandwich if I was using two colors that were so vastly different. But absolutely you should try whatever you want and work on getting that balance because our machines today are better than ever. Okay, so thank you, thank you. That was a really good question. If you, Carmen says, if you skip the jump stitch and slowly stow to the next leaf, you will get a beautiful circle on the inside. Hmm, Carmen, I'm gonna try to come back to that because that's a really good point. So I will try and address that when we're a little further along. Does the mini have a pinhole? I don't know the answer to that. 
Carmen answered for me. Good job, Carmen. <laughs> she says, no, the mini doesn't have a pinhole. Okay, well, good, now we know. Um, okay, so we are gonna do the curved line design, but we're gonna do this other one first. Okay, so enough talking, let's start stitching. We're gonna put our uh, needle right in the center of our triangle, so let's do that first. So again, I went ahead and I've already tested this design. So I know that I need the seven and a half size. So let me get that. Did I set it down somewhere? Nine and a half, seven and a half. Okay, so this is the size that we're gonna use. And I chose that because that is going to fit in this space, pretty much filling it up. Does it matter which way I start? No, it doesn't. Initially, it doesn't. Just go ahead and we'll put this right in the center. Get my foot all the way down so I can seat my needle and get these threads out of there. So remember that you're lining it up on the center line. Okay, you can see out here. Can you see? Let's check. Make sure you can see. Okay. So right here, we are inside the boundary. We're really close to the tip of the triangle, but we are in the boundary. So let's go ahead and we'll sew this one first. Okay, and now I'm gonna flip it over and use the other side. So get my key out, take the tape all the way off. I think it's easier to have the tape on the top. So I just am gonna take it all the way off each time instead of just leaving it partially attached. Cause if it's underneath there, then it's really, really difficult to pull it off. So let's go ahead and lining it up right here on the center. And again, we're fitting in just fine. So we flipped it to the opposite side. I'm gonna be careful right here. Watch this little guy. Make sure you don't get your hand bit by that. Just make your hand a little bit wide right there. So one of the things that I think could be fun inside of this space is I can go ahead and I can start putting little echoes in here. So we'll just do a couple. And I, I wanna show you that while we're already in this position, why didn't I do that the last time? Does anybody know? There's a reason. Okay. The reason that we didn't put this little flourish in when we had the other one on is because we didn't have a boundary here to do it. Right? So we'll have to go back and do it. So right here, right where this line is, I'm creating a quarter inch space differential. So let me show you. Right there on top of the template, the stitch line is right there and I'm just putting the plastic over it a quarter inch. And I'm gonna do that so that I have three lines for this flourish on this side. Touch the line and come back. And the same thing. So visually estimating right here, the quarter inch, just to create, ooh, sorry, lead foot, touch and coming back okay now let me show you something that i want to do next i'm going to put those other flourishes on the other side when i'm going to do this edge right here but for now i want you to see that if i try to put this leaf right here he's going to sew outside the boundary right so i mean i can go further out here but i want to put one that's kind of overlapping and fills where the boundary is so in order to do that and make this work, the easiest way is to actually take it off and use a different size. So let's take him off. Oh, he's being ornery. I just don't have the right angle to take him off. Put your tape back on, don't forget that. If you ever can't remember which one is which, right down here they always have a little moniker of whatever template it matches but I always want you to put your tape back on so you don't lose him. All right, so remember where that template is. I set him down. Okay, let's put this one on. Let's 
And which way do we want to go? We want to go this way. We want to echo this and come out this way. So he's on the green side for the moment. So is this a lot of switching around? Sure it is. What else do I have to do, right? So now I'm going to try to wing this out a little bit. And what am I doing? What is the spatial relationship? I'm going to turn it this way as much as I can so that I don't go outside of this boundary. So there's a limit right in there of where that quarter inch is. So let me show you. And that way it should be the same on both sides. When I line it up, I'm going to just put this here and I want to be just inside that quarter inch because I don't want him to sew outside my triangle, right? So that's why I'm making the choice of where is he going to go right there. Okay. So we'll come in and we'll touch and we'll stitch back up. All the way back down. Okay, and here I can just put a little flourish in there if I want to or not. It's up to you. This is going to be a little bit curvier because we use the other side. Okay, and if I want to put one more, there's something I need to do. I can still line this up and I can even change size because the length from there to there is a lot bigger. I could use the wider one, but I have to make sure that I'm not going to go outside this boundary. So I may have to sew out, out of the boundary a little bit. So let me show you what, what I mean by that. That's a lot of words. Better to show. Okay. Right now, I need to sew out a little ways along the boundary so then I can decide where the next leaf will end up. So I'll just use the straight edge. I'm just going to come out a little bit. And this leaf is smaller, but I can put a bigger leaf on there now. So I'm going to do that because I think that that's going to look better if we put a big one on there. I'm going to keep this little guy handy because we're going to need him in just a second. And we're going to bring the bigger one back out. And put him on. And make sure that we're going the right way. We want this part to be on the same side. So just making sure that we're keeping the same relationship. Get my tape in place. Okay, and so now let me show you what I want to do. I want to align him as if the foot was starting right there. And I just want to stretch this as far as I can. And I can make whatever relationship what I, that I want to. And I can even say, okay, right out to this little tip of this white stable tape. Or I could measure from the center when I do the other side. There's many ways that I could determine how big that other side would be. Touch. So you, again, you make the random rule to make it do whatever you want to do. We'll come in a little bit and then we'll just pivot, keeping this aligned and then we can put a little flourish in there if we want to. Okay, so what do we do now? Anybody know? If you know, tell honey. We'll see, we'll see if we're all on the same page. So we did two big ones. So we need to put the flourish in here, but we have to sew back to the center to do it, right? So that's why I took it off. So let's go ahead and do that first. We'll get these threads out of here. Let's cut these so they're out of our way now since we don't need them anymore. So there's my quarter inch and I can use my spacing gauge to get right back right on the existing stitch line, make it really clean. Okay, and now we can put those little flourishes in so that we can have this really cool cross hatch right in the middle. So let's make sure that we are orienting it the correct way. We need this curvy side, right? 
because we've already echoed this curvy side, we want to echo it. All right, let's flip it over and put this on. So it looks like we had a little maybe connection issues. So um, I'll let you guys know if our connection does go down, then I'm just going to end it for the day so you don't have to worry about trying to look for us again. I think we've gotten a, a good number of designs, but there's more I do want to show you. I want one more, but um, if it goes down, we're not going to try to reconnect, okay? So don't worry about that. Okay, so we're on this rounded side, right? And we want to go ahead and use that same area. So let me see if I can make sure you can see what I'm seeing right there. Okay, we're using this curvy edge and we're just going to come in and that's the quarter inch right there. That's what we're looking for with the spacing gauge right there like that. It's actually on top of the template, but I'm still just using it as a visual alignment. Okay. So touch and we'll come back to the center. And same thing each time. Right there, I'm just pushing the plastic about a quarter inch beyond the previous stitch line. And what that does is it creates a little space in that crosshatch so that it's not so tight. I could use the edge of the template and then it would be a quarter inch apart, but I like it with just a little bit more space. I think it looks better. So you can see right away Gorgeous cross hatch on there. Doesn't that look amazing? Love it. It's so pretty. All right, now, next step. Let's take this off. We know we need the smaller one. So we'll just take this off. And I'm just gonna leave it right here with the tape because we're gonna use him in just a second. So I'm just gonna keep him safe and sound right there. And we're gonna put this little matching one right here. Who remembers the random rule that we decided on in order to put this leaf in there. So let's see, we want it to go that way. So the random rule for this one, we're gonna make sure that it doesn't stitch below the bottom of this triangle. That's the rule. So we're using that as the spacing alignment right here. When we have our spacing gauge, we don't wanna have this sewing below the border here of the triangle. So we can use our spacing gauge and stick it right in there and make sure that it's tight enough that he will not stitch below that boundary. So right away, you can get one or two stitches and then he's gonna push you right into the triangle. So here, touch and back, all the way to the center. And then if we do want to put a little flourish in there, we can do that easy. Put a little curvy line in there. And then this last piece, if you feel comfortable moving out or whatever, you can do that. If you need it to be exact, you can take your ruler and you can measure the distance. We are using the bigger one, so let's go ahead and get that one. He's already open and ready for us to use. This is one of the reasons I really like having all these different sizes. So this curvy line is the side that we want, so we're on the correct side. Get that tape right on there, nice and secure. And then remember with this one, we have to sew out so let's see, that's kind of a straight line. Maybe we can even just use that part of the template. Let's see. That'll get us out a little farther. See, I always want to, I never want to take it off if I don't have to. Now, the alignment on this one is right here. We're going to line it up as if the foot were right there. And then that's going to be our stopping point. So we still got to sew out until the ruler touches. And the reason I liked this design is it kind of stretches out and fills up the triangle a little bit. So here I can freehand it if I want to, or I can use the straight edge, whatever I want. I'm kind of splitting this space and then 
we, let's see, we wanted to do this side. So we need to maybe come in just a little bit more. There we go. And we'll just curve a little curvy in there. And then we'll be done. Here, I'll just tack it off right here in the boundary. And let's see what we got. That's a lot of work for one triangle, huh? But it looks awesome. It's so pretty, look at that. I'll turn it the other way so you can see the whole thing. Doesn't that look so cool? All right, let's see if we have any questions. You love the arrows. I love the arrows too. I'm really happy using those. That's been a really fun tool to make things a little bit easier, make sure I know which direction I'm going. The, so here, one of the big things we learned is this makes amazing flourishes, right? And I kind of like the round flourish. It's a little smoother. This is kind of like a little more angular on this side, but those are just options for you. You can decide which one you like better. All right. Well, I'm glad you like it. There's a lot of people commenting. So hopefully if you, if you like it, try and share it with your friend. Maybe they would like it too. Always, you know, people are like, oh, I will if there's a giveaway. There's no giveaway. There's just me. Share it if you want to or don't. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, what is the thickest thread that you have used working with templates? I have used 30 weight and 28 weight successfully. Um, it is harder. I used a 40 weight thread in the bobbin and a 28 weight RFL in the top with rulers and I was able to sew and it looked great. Um, anything thicker than that, like 12 weight, I don't even try it. I don't like putting that in the top threader. I think it's just really clunky and it tends to bulk up fast. I don't like how it looks, so I don't use that. So that's the answer to that question. And let's see, almost missed something. Alrighty, well, I'll just have to look at so many of these later. So somebody was saying that this looks like a, a tulip right here. I do love that shape. And I think you're right, it absolutely looks like a tulip. And one of the things you can do with the tulip is do the inner side, but you could leave this off. Like when you put this one on, you could go up and tack it so that this is the overlapping petal and this does not exist right here. You could just touch there and come back. And to me, that looks even more like a tulip because then this outer leaf is, you know, covering this side. So that's just another option for you when you're doing your designs. Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead and move on to one of our last designs. So let's see what time we're doing. Oh, I better hurry up, right? <laughs> Took a little longer than I thought, guys. Okay, I've got this curvy line. This line is made with the feather spine. So I'm just gonna show you it really fast. Okay, I used this stitching line discs, so I'll show you how I did it. If you start like this, you can line it up on that zero center line, right? So let's see, like that. And I drew it and I stopped right here and I made a mark. In order to make this curve smooth, I don't like to go like this. I don't like to do that. What I like to do is go like this. So that if the foot is there, I'm gonna flip the whole template and touch the foot. This way I'm gonna get a smoother curve as I'm coming out of there, right? So then I'll stitch up to here and stop at the point. And then I'm gonna flip the template around to the other side, touch the foot or the stitching line disc and line it up at a quarter inch and continue that way. That makes this connection much smoother than if I try to do it like this, where you're sewing like that, and then you try to butt this side up like that. I don't think that works well. I like to put the actual curvature right there, and that makes this smoother. So I've marked it. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna just make a fill with that curvy line. All right, and this is with the five and a half size. So could I use a different size? 
Of course you can. You should totally feel comfortable doing that. So let me see, I need my, let's sew in. So I guess we'll just use this side right there. Sew in, so I'm lining this center line up and this center mark on my straight line right there. And I'm gonna sew right to the middle I'll just tack it right here because we're right on the edge so so right there that's where one of our leaves is going to go make sure that I'm lined up right here on this side as well So if you've ever had questions about how to sew this feather and how to connect it, I'm going to sew right to the edge right there to the middle of the curve that I marked. And now I'm going to flip it so that this center line of this curve is right in the center. And I really think that's important to do it that way because it's going to give you a much smoother look than having the end of this be right at the middle and trying to balance the edge of your uh, foot right on that. So I think that's going to make it look a lot better. Now, I want to be in the middle to put my leaf, so I'm going to just backtrack with my ruler right to the center, right there, and that's where I'm going to stop. So I'm going to put a little flourish right in this little dip. So the dip goes this way, so I want the feather or the uh, leaf pod on this side because then this is narrower. So we're going to put a little leaf pod on this side and then we're going to move down the line and we'll do it on the other side. So this is the five and the width of this is about four and a quarter, four and a half, somewhere like that. So this would fit in a five inch space if you had a border that was five inches. So here I want to line it up such that this is not going to stitch across the line. And I could, I could do it either way. I could flip the feather, I mean the leaf, so that it was the other way or this way. It won't matter, but we don't want to cross the line. That's the big part of it. That's the very first leaf. You want to make sure that you're not going to cut in, so you want to make sure that you're less than a quarter inch when this sews. So I just test it with a few stitches, make sure that he's not causing some problems. Okay, so we've done the first one and I can put a little flourish in there if I want to. Okay, and I'm right at the center. And now I can pivot and I can pivot however much I want. Right now, this is aligned right on the center right here. So I can use that as a reference or I can use a different line as a reference. This is just gonna take up a certain amount of space. So for now, I'm just gonna make this one come straight out. That's the random rule for the middle lobe. Stitch all the way back to the center. So you're, you're right where you can rotate. And we can put a little flourish in there, not a big one, because it's shorter. Okay, and then we'll just do one more, because one is about all we can fit. This is the limit. So once again, we're saying we don't want to sew past our boundary. So we're going to get our spacing gauge out, and that's the limit right here of how far we can go. It needs to be less than a quarter inch as he's stitching on there. So we make sure we don't sew past that little spine that we made. So touch and come back. And then we'll do a little flourish right there, just a little one. And they can be different sizes, it's up to you. So we've done one, we'll pull this off. And what do you think that we need to do now? What's the next step in order to travel and create our all over design? Come on guys, what do you think? Gotta send Honey some ideas. 
So right now we have the spine already stitched in. Now is the time when I would grab it back out. I'm right in the spine right there. So I can sew right down. I can get this lined up right along here and I can use my spacing gauge, make sure I'm right in the stitch line, right there. And I usually test it with just a few stitches when I get going. Make sure that I'm actually in that stitch line so I can stitch nicely. Right when I get to the edge here, I'm just gonna slow down a little bit because I'm right on the edge of the template. So it's a little tricky, but I need one more stitch to be in the middle because I marked the center. And now I'll put my leaf back on and I'm gonna do it on the opposite side now. So I keep it the same direction. I'm not gonna um, turn the leaf, but you can if you want to. I would play with that and see which way you like it. Okay, let me turn it so you can see what we're doing. This will be the last one, right? So we got this really cute little pod right here and we're gonna do the same thing. So we can start, we started on this close segment, right? With this round edge on this other side. So let's go ahead and we'll do it on this side. That'll be the same. Again, we're looking, don't cross over this feather spine boundary. This is the space we're looking for right here. Make sure that you're not gonna close that and cross over that line. So always put your spacing gauge right on there. And that's the first leaf. That's how you know what size or where you need to start. As long as you're not gonna cross over the line, that's the first one. Okay. And then we'll put the flourish in. This first one, he tends to get a nice full flourish. He's the, you know, the most visible. Okay. And then remember that we said when we did this one, he fits right up to the boundary. So we are essentially doing him straight so that this line is perpendicular to your seam line right there. And that means that he should be the exact same size as the one before. So touch and come back. And then just pivot a little bit to get your little flourish in there. Okay, and then the last one, he has an equally good rule. We don't wanna cut into the feather spine, so we just need to use that spacing gauge to make sure that he's aligned so that he won't cut below that line. So I'll just put that on there and just make sure that he can just fit in there, and this will be the next one. touch and come back right to the center and then a little flourish. Do these have to be perfect? No, they don't. It's okay. It's still going to look good if one has a, a bigger flourish or a smaller flourish or whatever. It's still going to look fine. And then what I would do is if, you know, this was longer, the, if this was a border, you do have some open space here. There's some ideas I can share about how to fill that in. Um, you can do straight lines, right? Or you can put a bigger template on and you can curve out to the boundary. And then you can just do parallel curves with your, with your feather spine in between. Or you can just do some straight lines and fill it in, no big deal. Um, I just think it looks really cute, I love it. And if I wanted to put even another one you could travel up this line and put a little feather leaf, but you just can't connect it to the center. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If, if I sew this one, I need to close it because I need to put the flourish in, but I can sew up here some distance, and then I can put the baby one on, or even the same one on, and I can just put another little, let's see, make sure we're doing it the correct way. Here we go. So it's all about direction with these little guys. You gotta make sure that you're 
orienting them, orienting them the way that you want them to go because they, they go so many different directions. So here I can just bring this back, you know, or kind of manipulate it and I can put another lobe in there as well. And I'm not worried about if he touches the bottom because he probably won't. And then we can just put a little baby petal in there. So we can fill that in as much. The reason I didn't do that last one for, for the demo is because it's, co it's complicated. You have to travel freely and you can't connect it to that center position. You can't connect it to here. You kind of have to come out and find a space and then put the little leaf in there. But you could do that with either one of these because they're on alternating sides. This gives you room to fill this in a little bit more. So let me tack it off and I'll pull it out and you can see what, what there is to see. All right, scissors. I think I dropped them. Where'd they go? I always have a spare somewhere because that happens to me so often. Thanks. So we'll just cut these, get these out of there. All right, so here's our little feather spine border. What do you think? Don't you think that's cute? I love it. I think it looks awesome. <laughs> I'm definitely going to use that for something. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think quilters in general don't mind work to get a result. I think that as quilters, we tend to do a lot of work in, in order to get the look that we want. So, you know, no problem. And again, I do feel like if I'm doing this for myself, I can do it without explaining each little piece. I can do it visually and I can do it much faster. With this, I kind of do recommend sewing in the spine at first because I think that is really the anchor for travel. But this is the 10 inch feather spine that I use, but any gentle curve could also work. So for example, if you had a back to back or if you had just a gentle, some kind of gentle curve or even the 12 inch arc, you could do one arc this side and then flip it and do it this way and then flip it and do it that way. So there's more than one tool that would allow you to kind of get this curvature and then you can also do different sizes. Like if I use a bigger one here, I can get a wider but remember that that would make this space wider too. So then you would have more emptiness on this side. But you know, I still think that looks really cool. Like look at it in this orientation. You can kind of see it like that. So you could always echo these two. Like if this is open on this side, you could use the feather spine and you could echo it. And if I had a larger one of these, I could echo these and fill that in until I got back to the curve and echo again. And that would give you a little bit more fullness out here and allow you to echo the curve out to your boundary if you needed to fill that in. Okay, so let's see. I'm just going through real quick, just seeing if there's any more um, demos. With the decorative um, foot and thread, Linda Martindale was asking about the decorative thread ruler foot. Um, I have done a demo. I haven't done one in a long time. I'll have to think about that and see what I can do. Um, alrighty. So Monday. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Nancy saying she's looking forward to her Monday mornings with my class. <laughs> So my feather class is this weekend, and if you haven't signed up for it, you want to look for the Feather Fantasy Sampler Quilt As You Go. It's posted on So Steady, and it's posted on my fabricated page. And that is a two-part feather class. So if that is something that you're interested in, that is this week. It starts this week, and it has a class on the 17th and a class next week on the 23rd, I think. So that will be uh, something for you to look forward to if you like feathers. And let's see what else. Oh, let's talk about, somebody commented on overstitching. And I'm gonna say Diane Morgan, she was responding to my question of what comes next. Yes, overstitching. If you are a quilter, 
please do not avoid overstitching. Do it whenever you can, both with a ruler and without a ruler. The only way that you can get better at overstitching is if you do it. And if you avoid it, like I did for years, <laughs> then you will never get good at it. So go ahead and do it whenever you can. It's really powerful and it helps you not have to cut your thread all the time. So that's really, really awesome. All right, so let's see where we are. I'm gonna just scroll down to the bottom, see if there's any last questions. I always go back through the feed and I check it. So uh, hopefully if I missed your question, I will get to it and I do try to respond. So hope you guys had a wonderful fun day, but I just think this is a beautiful leaf and I think you could do all kinds of just like leaves connected. You could like sew this one, stop here, start another one, stop there, start another one. This would make an amazing all over fill and it's really easy to put that veining in and it's great for borders, it's great for spinning, it's great for wreaths, so many different possibilities. So hope you love it as much as I do and have a wonderful day. Happy quilting and I will check through the feed and answer the rest of the questions and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Take care you guys, see you next time.